Ah, Ratchet, the team doctor. Say, I've got a little problem with the uh, problem. Are you sure that's an operating table? Since when did they come with cannons and missiles? Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. It's time for a look at another Generation 1 Transformer toy. Of course, we're still looking at 1984 releases since, after all, this is the line that turns, this part of the line turns 40 this year. And this time around, we have Ratchet. Ratchet, of course, was the medic for the Autobots. He was released in 1984. He was also available in 1985. He would be discontinued in 1986, but would go on to later become a mail-away figure. Now, of course, Ratchet is a mold reissue of Ironhide, so he's pretty much the same Transformer-wise, with only some minor changes done to reflect his different alternate mode. So, even his accessories will be exactly the same as Ironhide's. Now, for the benefit of those who may not have missed, who may not have been around for the Ironhide review, which you can find it on my channel, the reason that, they're diff that they don't look like their cartoon appearances is due to the fact that the Battle Cars line, where Hasbro took many of the Transformers from, out of Takara's toy line, were meant to be more powered mecha in the, in the line of, like, Battletech or Gundam. Whereas it would have a little man that would sit inside. As you can see here, there's a little chair here. And that would be where a little included action figure would sit in and be driving this like a powered mecha. Basically a robot under his own control. And as you can see, there's a molded seat in here on the battle platform, so that would imply that somebody else would be operating the weapon. So they weren't good. That's the reason why Ratchet and Ironhide did not include heads. Now, a fan group did make some official heads for them a number of years ago so that you could clip them onto the top of the toy and they would resemble their cartoon counterparts more easily. Now, I want to point out something here on Ratchet. Let's remove the robot from the battle platform so it'll be a little easier to see. You'll see here on the back of the ambulance, it does have a red cross. Let me kind of take the weapons off of this, fold it up so you can get a better look at it. I want you to see it. That way you can see perfectly it is the red cross. Early versions of Ratchet were released with this Red Cross on here, and on his fists he would have Red Cross stickers. Mine have worn off on this one. But the Red Cross actually is a trademarked logo. It's not a free logo that anybody can use. It is a trademarked insignia. So the actual Red Cross did threatened to sue Hasbro over it. So later issues of Ratchet had the Red Cross emblems removed from the toy. But of course, it is just a sticker, so it can be scraped away. As you can see, mine does have a little bit of play wear on it. So that is something to watch out for, especially if you are interested in variants. Of course, another thing I should point out is, for playware are these treads. The treads are fake on Ratchet, as they are on Ironhide, 
but these rear ones especially, if you turn them too, twer, turn and twist them too much, they will stress wear and they will break. This isn't my original trailer for Ratchet. I did have one from my childhood and it broke from that. It also broke on my brother's iron hide, so that's how I know they are very, very fragile. Of course, also the little lights here on the top can also be broken off too so always be careful of that when you're looking for a loose ratchet figure now of course here's the robot the actual robot of ratchet and it's really not much to look at pretty much like ironhide it's really doesn't have much of anything to go with it for articulation-wise, Ratchet only has it in his arms. The arms can swivel back at the shoulders like so. And there is a joint at the elbow, so it allows him to swivel the arm at an extra spot. But all in all, you really don't get to do a whole lot with him. Now we'll take a brief look here at Ratchet's accessories. We'll start with the missiles. These are little tiny missiles, just like they were on Ironhide, and they're all in chrome, so you'll have to watch for chrome wear. Of course, to connect them to the missile launcher, you just push down on the red post on the top, insert it, and then let go, and it will hold the missile. Unfortunately, this was a time in the 1980s where spring-fired weapons were outlawed, so it does not have any sort of a release mechanism, so you have to take it out yourself. And as I said, Ratchet and Ironhide both came with three of these missiles. Another piece to look at is his gun. It's exactly the same gun as with Ironhide, and it also has the same issue with it in the fact that the red post, which I just dropped on the floor, can be removed. And again, this part is all in chrome, so chrome wear is an issue. Excuse me a second, I'm going to go find that red piece. All right, that was you know, that was an easy spot. It didn't land on the floor. It actually bounced backward into my chair. So thankfully we got that found. I do not want to try to track down a 40-year-old red post. As you can imagine, that's pretty difficult anymore. Get that reattached and don't lose it again. And then lastly, one that's often forgotten about is this hip plate. It isn't mentioned on any of the listings, mainly due to the fact that it's not a weapon or an accessory, but it is a removable piece. And thus, and as you saw, it wasn't, wasn't that difficult for me to take it off of him, so you can lose it. This piece was meant as a storage spot for the cannon. So if you remove the red part, don't move. You can attach it in and basically when he's in vehicle mode, it holds on to it and you'd have a way to store it. Which can be quite clever, but unfortunately since it doesn't hold the red post, you just end up losing that and then we have the same problem again. But all in all, that is all of Ratchet's accessories. Alright, before we move on to transforming Ratchet, I'd like to show off some modern Ratchets that are in my collection so that all of you can kind of see how the character has been done in newer forms. Like right here, this is the Siege version of Ratchet. Again, it was a re it was redone to also serve as Ironhide. 
but they gave Ratchet some more appropriate accessories. Like in his hand here, he is basically carrying a Cybertronian-type wrench, which goes well with him being the team's medic. Likewise, in the Earthrise run, Ratchet would appear rather late in it. He would again be a reuse of Ironhide's mold, because he also came with the same removable van top. And it also could be converted from a shield into being a battle platform that he could stand on. Sort of an homage to this piece here from the Generation 1 era. This ratchet was not sold at retail, he was an online exclusive where he was sold alongside a Paradron Medic, which was basically a retool of RC. The Studio 86 line has also had Ratchet involved in it, starting with him getting a Core Class version. And as you can see, the Core Class version pretty much is about the same height as the Generation 1 toy when he's not on the platform. So in some ways, since these guys were sort of built to interact with the Ark playset that was released back in the Kingdom line, <coughs> some of the Generation 1 toys could also interact with it. One of these days I'm going to have to break that out and see how that works. And of course, also the last one that I have is the regular Studio 86 Ratchet which is meant to be one that is more accurate to his cartoon appearance. And of course there's also a variant, there's also another variant of this Ratchet that's available. It will be one that is battle damaged to signify his death at the hands of the Decepticons during the beginning of the animated movie. So yes, Ratchet was killed off. Spoiler alert. That's a little late for that, but... Yep, Ratchet was one of them that bought the farm. But of course, that year they, the Autobots got the Protectobots, and they had another ambulance in there, and he pretty much took over the medical responsibilities that Ratchet had. Since, unfortunately, they did not bring Ratchet back in any of the later lines. Yet, he would still remain alive in the comic books. Because Ratchet would be responsible for making the Pretender Legends, as he would be held hostage by Galvatron and forced to bring Starscream to life. Ratchet would use the opportunity to bring back Grimlock, Bumblebee, and Jazz, making all of them pretenders. Rather interesting story. Alright, to transform Ratchet, like many of the Generation 1 toys, it's a rather simple affair. We'll start with the robot first. You'll fold up the chest like so. We can rotate the arms so that the wheels are now facing the bottom, and then they just fold in to help hold the windscreen in place. And then we come down here to his feet and fold them backwards. And that gets the lower portion of the vehicle ready. Just the camera here a bit. And then for the rear portion, you just take the can of the missile launcher, fold it down onto the black stalk, and then fold it onto the seat. We'll bring up the sides and press them together gently. And then bring up the rear door. We'll shift the tre the rear tre the two rear treads and fold their stalk in and upwards. And then finally, the single front tread folds inward. And then you just attach this on top. And then there we go. Ratchet is in his alternate mode of an ambulance. Basically, he is a Nissan Cherry Vanette 
a one box that's been modified to be an ambulance. I'm guessing this was probably a semi-common occurrence. I mean, after all, in the Cannonball Run, they had a van that had been modified to be an ambulance. So basically, it was not built to provide the full coverage that a regular ambulance would have. But it could serve the primary purpose of getting a patient from wherever they are at from their injuries to a hospital. But of course, back in those days, there were also more private ambulance companies that would do that. I'm not sure how prevalent that still is today. But at any rate, and Ratchet was also released at a time when there was ru actual rubber tires on him, on the toys. And he does roll okay. I think mine's getting a little too old for this. Yep, he doesn't want to roll very well. I think one of the wheels is jammed trying to be jammed or something, but at any rate, there it is. Now we get to my thoughts. As this was the only ratchet that I had growing up, since it was the only one available, I always did enjoy it. It's just unfortunate that it was a rather fragile toy back in those days, and remains so today. But I always did enjoy it, since he was a rather prominent character in the cartoon series. Being the only one that was the team's medic, that gave him some prominence in the show. Whenever the Autobots would get injured, it was up to Ratchet to fix them. And in numerous episodes, that pretty much served as his purpose. So, yeah, when he was killed off in the animated film, I was a little bit disappointed. But, all in all, I still do enjoy this toy. It is one of the more fragile ones in the Generation 1 line, so I will warn any of you that are seeking one of these guys out, he is going to be very difficult to find. Oh, well, before we go, I almost forgot we should take a look at his tech spec. That's a problem. I'm getting a little out of practice on some of these. <laughs> all right, his tech spec is done all in red to signify he is an Autobot, and it even says Autobot above his picture. And this picture would have been on the front of the box. It gives his name as Ratchet. His function is Medic. And his, uh, there's a quote associated with him. It says, you break it, I'll remake it. Ratchet was the best tool and die man on Cybertron. In his work bay on Earth, he can make anything from a pin to a missile. This almost makes him sound like he's just as much of an engineer as, Rat as Wheeljack is. Repairs injured Autobots, given the right parts. Likes to party give back talk, but does any job as well as anyone. I can partially agree with this. I do love to give some back talk to people. Not much on parties, but hey, to each their own. Has laser scalpels, arc welders, electron microscopes, circuit sensors, fluid dispensers at his disposal. Now, it's interesting here that they bring up some of his medical tools, because he does have uh, some of his laser scalpels in his arm. And supposedly, in one of the comics, when he was uh, captured by Megatron, he was able to use them against Megatron to briefly get free. Now, while naturally Megatron was not thrilled at this, he did admire Ratchet's ingenuity and his bravery to do that. Sometimes his having a good time interferes with his effectiveness. 
Well, that's probably true of most doctors, especially if they've been out partying and then all of a sudden have to be called to the ER. How many times have we seen that on our medical dramas? There, with how much it's been done, there's got to be some basis in fact on that. At any rate, we'll take a look here at his tech spec grid. Normally you would need a red decoder to lay over it so you can see the bars on it, but I can see them pretty well. Probably not translating well on the camera, but I can see them. It gives his strength as 4, his intelligence is 8, his speed is 4, I would have expected better out of an ambulance, his endurance is 5, his rank is 7, his courage is 8, his firepower is 3, not surprising, and his skill is 10. So, Ratchet is indeed good at his job, but he is a little slow and weak. But then again, nobody's perfect. Now we got all that covered. That was my review of the Generation 1 version of Ratchet. I hope you all enjoyed it. And please do remember that if you love the content that we feature here on this channel, I would appreciate a like, a share, and a comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. This is Sparkster1701 saying I'll catch you all later.